Then the next is the most important practice of all is called the Laman Nanjo. Now he is going through the practice that is going to purify all perceptions, perceptions of self and the perception of Guru. Both need to be purified together at the same time. That which we are holding to the truth also has to be purified now. So that is the ultimate. So that, now you are coming to the nature of the mind and understanding the mind, how the mind how, how, the, how the mind displays the phenomena and things that arise from the mind. So in the Guru Yoga now you are required, required to visualize yourself as Vajra Yogini. In the Tessar Mondo short Vajra Yogini, the Vajra Yogini is in a walking posture upon a lotus. It's not, not on a dancing posture, it's always on a walking posture. The reason why she is in a walking posture is because she's saying that I need to benefit certain beings. And there are many certain beings that I need to benefit continuously throughout the three times. So, therefore, it shows to her unending activity that she's involved in. There's not even a moment of pause for Vajra Yogini to work for the benefit of beings. Therefore, it visualizes Vajra Yogini in the walking posture, naked. And then, of course, you will visualize her, you know. Uh, I think you have a picture, a picture in there, no? Mm -hmm. mm. Let me see what the picture shows there. It shows it's showing us standing up, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, that, that's okay. That, that's the one. Yeah, in the walking position, that's, that's kind of a lotus sun and the moon. The sun and the moon is the Wisdom and method in union, that's was the sun and the moon, wisdom and the union. And, and the lotus petal signifies subtle channels, subtle channels of the atoms that are in the body. And she is totally naked, naked showing that there is no need to, uh, no, 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 no need to cover anything, which is, she is showing the nakedness of the mind. She is saying, I'm not going to have any perceptions cover my mind. So my mind is as naked. It's, it's the rawness, it's the directness of the mind. That's why she is naked. At the same time, she is naked also. She's showing, don't be attached to bliss. She's saying, though my female body is expensive, understand my female body is for understanding the bliss emptiness nature of the practice. Don't physically. Uh, grasp to my body as as an as as a as an sexual object. Transcend your desire to do the desirelessness, great bliss of the five kayas. That's why she's naked, showing the liberation of a normal desire to that of the five kayas. That's what that is meant for. So she's saying, don't be caught in the bardo thinking of a female body and then getting getting stuck to take a rebirth, but rather. Think that is the bliss of the kayas and liberate them. So, so, so part of her hair is tight, part of her hair is loose. She's, 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 she's adorned. The reason why part of her hair is tight, part of her hair is loose is she's saying in a meditation, neither be too strict nor be too loose. She's saying just go in the middle way of meditation. Don't make your mind too contorted or don't make your mind too relaxed. Just find the middle, like a string of music string. If you want a music string, you can't tighten it too much or you can't loosen it too much. Just have the right pitch, right tightness to make the noise. So similarly, she's saying, your mind you has to have the right frame that you, you can work with it. You know, so, so that, and then part of the thing, she's wearing a silken scarf that is, that is flowing in the, in, 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 in the wind. And that she's saying, let the mind flow. Don't restrict the mind. Don't try to control the mind. Let the mind flow. Because that's the nature of the mind. There is no way you can control the mind in the sense of stopping the thoughts. Uh, that is not progress. You have to watch the mind, recognize it with awareness, and not be attached. That's the thing. Don't be attached. Let the thoughts move. And thoughts will always move. It's not as though the thought will stay stagnant. No. Thought will arise and dissolve, arise and dissolve. That's the pattern of the thoughts. So she is saying, don't restrict the thought like a scarf is flowing in the space. Let it move. 
two legs, wisdom and skillful means, two breasts, blissful and bliss and emptiness, four hands, two, two hands and four feet, the four joys. She is saying, embrace the four joys and practice it. You know, all right. And she's smiling, seductively she's smiling. And here on, on, the, on the side of the mouth, she has four, four fangs showing, slightly four, four of the fangs. She's saying, cut the four concept of birth. Neither be born in miraculous, neither be born womb, neither be born moisture, neither be born in egg. These are the four kind of births that we can take in, in this universe. So she said, don't be born anywhere within this form. Reach enlightenment. This enlightenment cut the concept of death, this form. So then, Then on the right hand she holds a curved knife and then in, in this hand she holds a nectar coupler and a curved knife in her hand. The curved knife is, the knife is curved because the point is, she said, with the knife cut your evil, cut your evil. But cutting your evil is not enough. Cut your evil and then the knife has a hook at the back and then it draws you outward. She says, cut your evil and pull your mind, you know. No? Cut your ego and, and then liberate it towards realization. Just cutting is not enough, but liberate it towards realization. So, so when you cut the ego, then she say cut with wisdom and skillful means because the knife has a five-pronged doji on the top of the curved knife. The five-pronged doji means the five wisdoms. She say cut the ego, but with the five wisdoms. With the five wisdoms, understand the primordial wisdoms. Is important and the nectar she's putting in the kapala means drink the nectar of immortality destroy the concept of death death is only in the mind so she's saying destroy it destroy that drink the nectar of immortality and and and, and, and the crane that she's holding the kapala that she's holding that is the human skull she's holding that is she's, because what is most precious to us is our kapala is the most important thing to us that's where the brain rests so here she is saying, don't have any designs and projections on the phenomena. Let go. The kapala is the sign of letting go of the phenomena itself. Don't, don't, don't have any cravings to carve. Because in the kapala there are a lot of, lot of lines and drawings and fruits. She saying, don't have any of the desire for fruit, desire for, 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 for anything. So she's holding the kapala and then of course she has some flower garlands around her with semi-precious gem. And flower, this is the purity of the teaching. She's showing the purity of the teaching, the beauty of it. And she has three eyes. Three eyes is the three kayas. She's constantly roaming in the three kayas, looking to benefit sentient independent beings. And she's also saying at the same time, I am embodied by all the five Buddha families. I am the mother of all the Buddhas. That's why she has the five Buddha on, on her crown. She says, I am the mother. I have given birth to all the Buddhas. I am the mother. So therefore, I am your mother. So your essence that's running in you is the essence of my essence that's running through you. So she is showing that. So you visualize her. And then, then you have to look seductively up in front of you <coughs> to attract Guru Mishin. So now Guru Mishin is in front of you majestically appearing, and you are the Dakini. Now, whether some men will say, oh, I'm, I'm not a Dakini, I'm, I'm not a woman, I'm... Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. See, within us we have both the channel of Roma, and we have both the channel of Kalma. Kalma and Roma is a male and female channel. We have both. Actually, we have both. We are neither male nor female. That's it. You know, our grasping to an identity makes us male or female, but in the essence, you know, we are one of nature, right? So in front of us now is Guru Mishi, and then Guru Mishi is seated upon a thousand petal lotus upon the sun and the moon, adorned with all the nine robes and with the crown and everything. You all know what Guru Mishi looks like anyway. So, then Guru Mishi is also a 16-year-old youthful lady in this mining. He's holding the trident on his shoulder 
and then this carpenter is holding a symbol, a long life vase in the sand, and his hand is now in the um, did it. He's, he's holding the doji towards his heart. It's not in the subjugation mode. The doji is towards his heart, and he's holding holding the long life vase kapala, and he's radiantly smiling. So you visualize Guru Mishra in front of you, and now the Guru Mishra is the embodiment of all the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and then surrounded around him are all the the lineage masters. And in the long window, of course, you have the whole lineage masters to visualize one after the other. But in the short one, you just have Guru Mishin surrounded by all lineage, the, the, the embodiment of all the lineage masters in front in the space. So every atom that you see is all filled with Buddhas. And that's what that is. Hmm. Hmm. Now, so now Guru Mishin, as far as he's concerned, now he's the essence of life. He's the embodiment of all refuge in front of him. So Guru Bhaji is now expressing the male energy and the female energy is expressed by Yeshi Sogir. Guru Bhaji is, is, is expressing the male energy and he's expressing the essence of the Tata Garba, the whole essence of the Tata Garba, the essence of enlightenment is Guru Bhaji himself. So you visualize him in the front, radiated and smiling. He's wearing the nine robes, which is the nine yanas, and he has the crown wearing, symbolizing that he is the king of kings, emperor of all emperors, he is the emperor of all universe, he is the lord of all, all, the, all, the, all the lord. So that is the, the crown that he is using. He is he's sitting in the royal posture, left leg inside, right leg stretched out, and, 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 uh, and lo lovingly looking. Though in his face there is peacefulness, yet at the side of his mouth there is a slight sign of wrathfulness. So what Guru Mishra is saying is, I will use both the wrathful and peaceful means to bring your mind into the enlightenment. So he's going to use both those things through peaceful and through wrathful means that he's going to use. So you see him up there. So with fervent devotion, with Guru Mahesh now in the front, then you know, let's see. Uh, so therefore, then you Guru Mishin in front of you, now you say in front of you, your presence Guru Mishin, please, you know, you are my teacher, you are my essence of awareness, whatever you say I will follow, whatever you do I will follow, up to now, I have made decisions on my own and I have wandered in the samsara. Now with you, please guide me, tell me what to do. You know, I will follow that. Please help me, release me from the state of bardo. If I should fall in the bardo, guide me so that you can guide me towards the path of enlightenment. Not only in this life, but in next life and also in future lives. Wherever I may be, please be my guide. Be present. This is a commitment you are asking Guru Mishin to, 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 to shower on you. And, and so, of course, Guru Mishin will readily will be pleased and happy that you requested that of him. And he is obliged to give his blessings and to guide you and to become, to be, to be your soul father. That he takes you through the stormy turbulations of samsara, that he takes you out from there and guides you around the path, sends you all his retinue of his, uh, of, of his enlightened disciples to guide us along the path. So to him, then you say, Guru Mishra, please, I will recite your heart mantra, and now please, you know, grant me the blessing. And then you say, Oma Hom Mizam Guru Pema Siddhi Hum. And that Oma Hom Mizam Guru Pema Siddhi Hum has tremendous important power in that recitation. There is a secret there is an outer and an inner and a secret explanation of this mantra. In essence, this is the mantra that a hundred million Dakinis recited to, to Guru Mishin. These are what they recited. This is the direct. So it has the power of the hundred million Dakinis. Recitation power is in this recitation. So you say, Recite that. Not too loud, not too short. It's called the quarter length recitation. 
you do that as many times you, you, you can. Then after that, when you have done that recitation of Guru Yoga, then from Guru Mahesh, from the crown, from the throat, from the heart, three rays of light will shoot out from Guru Mahesh, directly to you as Vajra Yogini, on your crown, on your throat, on your heart. That, that's the first light. Three will shoot out. So that is now the body, speech and mind that is just short from Guru Mahesh's awareness. They shoot out into you because they shoot out into you as atoms that are inside yourself. Guru Mahesh is empowering the atoms that we have that have not been activated with wisdom. So he is activating those atoms that are in there that are circulating, that have not necessarily been energized. So he's energizing that atom, those three atoms. Then, on, then the next is, again, five lights will shoot out, again, once more. Again from the crown, again from the throat, again from the heart, again from the navel center, again from the cereal center. Five will shoot out, again, once more. Now this five is, is now energizing the, the five important atoms. These are the five primordial wisdoms that are connected to atoms in our body. They are connected. The atoms and the primordial wisdoms are connected. Atom is the primordial wisdom. So those five will come. That is body, speech, mind, and ku, sung, tu, yun, den, chin, le. Body, speech, mind, qualities, and activities. Those are the five that, that, is, that is shooting out into us. So at that time, you're still reciting the mantra. It doesn't mean you finish mantra. You still recite the mantra. So, then, as a final stage of his blessing, which is now called the Rikpa, the blessing of the ultimate mind essence blessing, called the Rikpa, then from his heart, from his heart, he will dissolve. Before the light comes, he will then dissolve into a five colored light. Five colored light. That five colored light will then shoot right into your heart. It will shoot into your heart, the five colored light. That is the Rigved Salvam. He has given you the most important empowerment of the great perfection called the mind, empower, mind empowerment. He gives you then the five colored thing as a mind empowerment, he gives it into you. So when that dissolves into you, then Benza Guru Kaya Waka Chitta Siddhi Hum, you have to say. Benza Guru Kaya Waka Chitta means blessing of the crown, throat, heart, navel center, cereal center. It means now I receive the blessing of the, all the five blessings I received in my three five centers. Then his mind and your mind. Huh? What? Where's the Guru Kaya Wakati to say the Siddhi Pung? Mama wish you running here, man. Rita, drink and mama, I'm sure that's your. Now that's the highest teaching that you can receive now. Now it says, once the mama is dissolved into myself, into my very rikwa, my rikwa and his rikwa has become one, then I'm facing the very nature of emptiness, luminous clarity. That is a union. I'm now exposed to that. Immediately I'm exposed to that very nature of vivid nowness that is beyond past, present and future, right at this very moment of nowness, I'm now experiencing the rawness, the raw nature of the Ripa. It's now the, my experience. So the Lama has become one, Guru has become one, all have become one in the nature of my Ripa. So therefore, in that remain for a while in the Ripa. That's called the clarity of the emptiness of the Rikpa. That's what you will experience. Within that, there will be no thoughts. There will be no identification to any phenomena of any kind. You will be speechless, wordless, and in a sense it become like you'll have no thoughts appearing at that moment. Simply the vast space of luminosity will arise. And when that arises, remain in that, but that will not stay for long, then uh, suddenly, again, another ordinary thought will come up afterwards. Then, 